So I'm coming back to uh, discuss the Akkadian Empire, and I w again want to remind the class, this um, section is a little bit rough um, because you have all these interesting civilizations that we're just name dropping right now. We're going through, you know, Uruk, and and then we're going to talk about you know Akkadians and Assyrians and uh, you know Sumerians. We we're talking about, and the key thing that I want you guys to remember and I'll keep drilling in, is that we're looking at these various peoples that we don't have as a, a lot of information on. You know, we do have way more than I'm covering here for this class, but uh, ultimately the contributions of these societies are going to be, uh, as I've mentioned many times, contributors to the world in which that you and I are living in right now. Okay, and so I'm going to just kind of cover a little bit more briefly these next next two uh, sections, just, just to get us to kind of think about some of the main things that are important, okay? And if you have more questions and want to be, you know, even beyond what's covered in the book or my lectures about, um, you know, delving into ancient uh, Acadia or Assyria, um, you know, or the Sumerians, um, feel free to hit me up and I can lead you to some good documentaries, some um, scholarly journals or whatever to give you just more details. Anyhow, um, the Akkadian Empire of Sargon the Great, what makes him significant? First of all, I always want to remind us how far back we're going. We're in 2015 CE or AD as it was more often referred to. Sargon is 2,340 years or, or, or to around like, you know, 2,305 before the Common Era or before Christ. So that's a long time ago. Um, but uh, whatever we uh, do know is that um, the first empire in the world was created uh, um, by Sargon. And empires are significant in the sense that, well, I mean, what is an empire, right? An empire is identifies a kingdom or a state that controls foreign territories either on the same continent or overseas. And so I want to kind of talk about that and think about that sec for a second about what an empire is. Um, some people don't think of the United States as an empire, but are we? I think if you look closely about how we operate our foreign policies, we definitely are an empire, but we're not a traditional empire in the way that some of these kingdoms uh, were. Britain and France definitely operated kind of in these in, in this way that Sargon did. I mean, there used to be a, a, an old saying, the sun never sets on the British Empire because the British, you know, ruled a lot of different people. Uh, India, for example, and um, but uh, uh, in any case, this notion of empire so very long ago is obviously going to strongly influence, for example, Greeks and Romans, and as we're going to see going into the next uh, several chapters, that uh, Western civilization and the topic of Greece and Rome is crucial, right? Okay, and part of it is this idea of how a state or a society gets put together. And so this is really the contribution that the Akkadian Empire uh, and Sargon's legacy leaves us. And just the way, you know, having a, a standing army, for example, there's all these different things that um, made, uh, you know, him important for us to study for this chapter. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, and then... You know, here I want to apologize because I do have a lot of Assyrian uh, um, students many times. And it'd be nice to cover more of ancient Assyria. I do that more in my world history class. Um, just know again that kind of like what we're talking about, what I've been repeating, is that these various dynasties and kingdoms were doing things that um, reflect uh, what's going on in, in the modern world. And I'm just going to say one uh, other thing is that Assyrians, Assyrians were known for being violent and brutal, and so were 
uh, everybody in this region from Sargon and, and, and whatever. And um, I never want to make an apology for violence. But I, I think it's fair to say that if you look at the problems that Mesopotamia had, it's, you, it's the same problem that uh, takes place in Iraq today. You have a land that's covered, that doesn't have natural um, protection to keep out invaders. And so to maintain your independence, you have to have a strong leaders or, or um, you know, warring is going to be more common. I mean, we think about this as being in, in the United States of America. Who's going to invade us? We have Canada to the north. We have uh, big bodies of water. And then we have Mexico in the south. We are far superior militarily to our, our neighbors. We don't have that kind of hostile relationship with Mexico and Canada. And henceforth, our stability has been way better for us on our soil in the United States of America than let's say even European countries have had to face. And there's a reason for that. Geography and the way that your land is situated uh, um, next to other kingdoms, other governments and states, okay? I want you guys to really think about this because part of what makes living in the United States, for example, so much easier than it's been for, the, let's say, the, even the British and the Germans and the French is this geographical uh, kind of security that we have, an advantage that these other states didn't have, and it's certainly not in Mesopotamia. Ancient Mesot Mesopotamia and modern day Iraq are in the same uh, boat as, as having this problem of, of uh, securing its borders and dealing with its neighbors, okay, and, and resources and, and just that exposure that it has to deal with. All right, so um, I'm going to quit there and then we're going to actually talk a little bit more about Assyrian Babylon and then go into religion um, in that region.